Hey everyone, welcome to week 13 and the final week of Advanced Econometrics. This week we're talking about two final topics to kind of wrap up this semester. We're going to talk about dynamics in discrete choice models and how to deal with endogeneity in discrete choice models. Just as a refresher, last week we talked about individual specific coefficients. That kind of wrapped up our discussion of mixed logit models and uh, simulation-based estimation and then individual specific coefficients kind of took us one, one layer uh, deeper in how to, how to think about applying some of those uh, models and methods. And this week we're going to talk about kind of two topics that, that generally apply to, uh, well, on endogeneity we'll mostly talk about mixed logit models with dynamics that can apply to kind of any, any of the discrete choice models that we've talked about this semester. Uh, and the readings for this week, the dynamics portion uh, is going to come from the train textbook chapter 7.7 .7, and the endogeneity section will come from the train textbook chapter 13. So make sure to read those first. Um, I guess I should say specifically what we're going to talk about on the dynamic side, we're going to start by just talking about static models, the, the kind of opposite of dynamics. And then we'll work through uh, some examples of dynamic discrete choice models and then finally kind of more generally describe these models and then and, and formally and mathematically kind of talk through them. And then on the endogeneity side, we're going to talk about just kind of broadly endogeneity and structural models and then talk about two different methods for dealing with endogeneity, BLP estimation, and then the control function model. So each one of those will be their own video this week. So let's start with dynamics and actually start with the opposite of dynamics, talking about statics in panel data models. And I want to bring this up because I think it's important to distinguish what we mean by dynamics as being different from static models. And so a static structural model is one in which an agent maximizes their objective function within the current time period without considering the effect that their choice in this time period will have on choices made in future time periods. Kind of in nothing we've talked about uh, all semester, have we said anything about how today's choice might affect tomorrow or sometime in the future, choices that are made tomorrow or sometime in the future. And that's gonna be the key kind of distinguishing feature between static models and dynamic models. Uh, we can kind of incorporate what I'm gonna call dynamics in quotes, uh, kind of quasi dynamics by thinking about lagged or future explanatory variables uh, or some state dependence through lagged outcome variables. I mean, we kind of did this some in, in like the problem set where we were thinking about, uh, uh, or, or sorry, in, in examples where we thought about uh, purchasing air conditioners or HVAC systems where we talked about what will be the kind of future continuing annual operating costs of these systems. So we're kind of thinking about future explanatory variables there, but nowhere did we say that if you buy some kind of system today, that's going to in some way affect the kinds of choices you might make about house or other appliances or anything like that in the future. I think this distinction will become more clear as we actually get into examples though. Um, but one reason I want to say all this is because I think sometimes people have the kind of mistaken idea that if you're working with panel data, that's inherently dynamic, but panel data models can be and really usually are just static models, it's just that we're observing people making static choices many times, but not actually taking the dynamics of those choices into consideration. We're going to contrast that with, with what we're going to call a kind of a fully dynamic structural model where the agent is going to maximize their objective function while explicitly considering the effect that their choice in the current time period, the effect that that will have on choices in future time periods. Um, and, and, and what we mean by this is that a choice in one time period may actually change the choice set in future time periods or, or the utility of future choices. And we want to represent that when we think about what the agent is going to choose in the current time period. And modeling that is going to require a more complex framework. But before we get into that, Let's just talk about panel data with, with more of a static model. We talked about this when we talked about the logit model and then the mixed logit model, but I just want to say it again. We can use the logit model to model discrete choices over time with panel data. We just kind of add a time dimension to, to both our random utility model and to our choice probabilities as we have here. One issue is that the logit assumption has to hold. So those epsilons, the unobserved or random utility has to be IID type one extreme value. 
And, and that includes not just amongst alternatives, but for an individual over time. But of course, the kind of unobserved preferences that a decision maker has that might might lead them to choose one alternative over another, those kind of preferences are likely to be dependent over time. People aren't just kind of drawing random preferences every time period. And, and so that IID assumption is likely not to hold. So, so that's one reason why we said maybe the, using the logit model with panel, panel data isn't so great. But I just wanna highlight once again that, that even if we had panel data in the logit model, as we've defined it so far, that would just be a sequence of static choices, not a fully dynamic model. Uh, we're just kind of assuming that the decision maker maximizes their utility in this time period, but not at all thinking about how what they choose today might affect the kind of choices available, the utility of those choices, or what choices they might make in the future. The mixed logit model works better with panel data. We talked about this when we talked through the mixed logit model. Uh, we can once again just add the time dimension here. Importantly, though, with the mixed logit model with random coefficients, our, our betas have this n uh, subscript to them. And so we're thinking about individual level preferences as kind of uh, being consistent over time. And that's going to give us some correlation in an individual's preferences and an individual's choices over time, which gets us closer to reality, gives us these more complicated choice probabilities here. But if we had all the data, we now know how to estimate a model based on these choice probabilities. Um, of course, just to reiterate, the basic idea here is that these, these individual specific coefficients are going to represent unobserved preferences, unobserved to the, to the econometrician, observed preferences. We model those as being random and estimate the distribution, the theta parameters that define the distributions of those individual specific coefficients. And having those individual coefficients are going to yield these unobserved correlations and choices over time periods, which is more, more uh, realistic than what we had with the, the basic logit model. And even though we're getting a better representation of multiple time periods, this is still inherently just a sequence of static choices. We've had said nothing about how what a decision maker chooses in time period one will affect what they do in future time periods and how their choices in time one might affect the kinds of choices that are available to them or the kinds of choices that they're making in future time periods. As I said though, we can kind of use within these static models, some kind of like lagged outcome variables to model things like habit formation, variety seeking behavior, switching costs, brand loyalty. We could, we could go on and on um, and kind of describe how um, choices that you make in one period might affect the choices you make in later periods. And we can represent those kind of lagged outcome variables in a static model. We can think about these as all being examples of how past choices affect the decision maker's utility in the current time period. If there's some habit formation going on and the decision maker has made the same choice for a couple periods in a row, that's going to affect what they choose today. But if past choices affect present choices, we can think of the fact that present choices are going to affect future choices. And if a rational decision maker knows that what they choose today is going to affect their future and the kind of future choices that will be available to them or the future, future choices that they will make, then they're gonna to wanna to kind of bake that into their decision making today. And in order to capture that kind of fuller, richer model of how a decision maker might kind of simultaneously think about now and the future, we're gonna to need to use this kind of fully dynamic discrete choice model, which we're gonna talk through over the next two videos. In the next video, we're gonna work through an example that I think will make it much more clear what exactly we mean by a dynamic discrete choice model.